30 Minutes with Ron. Hello, welcome to another edition of 30 Minutes with Ron. I'm Ron Gagliardi, the host of the show, and tonight's show will be about art, and it'll be about specific kind of art and a specific program. And my guests tonight are right over here. This is Tony Ruggiero. He's a teacher at Arts Place. And this is Frank Hill, who is one of the students. Welcome. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with Tony. Sure. First of all, give us a little background about you. About me. Well, I've been uh, at uh, Arts Place, CPFA Arts Place, for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a self-taught artist. My main functions there are teaching uh, advanced drawing for adults and teenagers. I teach pen and ink, which is a specialty of mine, which will probably lead us to talk about what we're talking about today with the veterans here. And uh, before that, I was uh, unemployed uh, due to the fact that my job went away. So The nerve. I, yeah, I'm on it. And I uh, was searching around and started doing some portraits of people's homes, friends of mine, my own, and I got discovered by Arts Place. So uh, here I am. Before that, I was a teacher. So I'm back full cycle. Excellent. Doing that. <clears throat> and there's a specific term for the type of art that you do. Uh, yes. Well, you have a choice. You can take pointillism, you can take stipple or dots. Most people are familiar with that. Uh, any one of those terms. Uh, it's basically uh, creating realistic appearing images, faces, uh, animals, yep. cars even, uh, by spacing dots, very tiny dots at different distances apart and there, therefore you create a dark to light, light to dark pattern yeah. and uh, it's quite satisfying and a little therapeutic. Ah, there's that Can word. be. We yes. have to talk about that word. Sure. But I like to look at pointillism and say, that's nice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I, that's only me. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> All right. uh, quite often, it's, it's, you know, you bring up a, an interesting point, I think, hopefully <clears throat> interesting. Uh, people ask me almost every time I show a picture or one of my works, now, how many dots did you put in there? Or they know I couldn't answer that. They might ask, how long did it take you? And I can't answer that either. But it's uh, millions, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, in completing a, a complete project. Unfortunately, yeah. you never run out of them. Never run out of the dot. The easiest stroke to make. Excellent. All yeah. right. Frank Hill, tell us a little, about, little bit about you. Well, I, I'm going to go from future back. Okay. Um, I just retired from Cheshire from the school system uh, after 36 years and uh, loved every minute of it. My son and my wife live in Cheshire. Um, I grew up in Greenwich, Connecticut, and I, I've been here since uh, 1975, so I'm a... According to Cheshire people, I'm a fairly recent uh, person. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I've been retired for two years, and I, I realized that I needed to stretch myself a bit. I needed to do, challenge myself. And I was at uh, breakfast at Main Street Cafe, and I looked at the Cheshire Herald, and I saw the story about Arts Place offering um, a course to veterans. Uh, drawing and I've since I don't know how to draw uh, anything I don't think I've ever drawn anything uh, except maybe a stick figure uh, so anyway I thought that that's the perfect thing for me to do um, because I'm nervous about it it's a challenge so so I did and um, it went I loved it uh, I, I, it went very well I learned that I I can actually draw something that's mm -hmm. recognizable mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's about it. I mean, I could go on and on. I got drafted when I was uh, out of college, just out of college. I uh, went to Vietnam, uh, was wounded, and uh, got a disease, a rare tropical disease. Um, so while I was in Vietnam, I took the photos that you'll see mm -hmm. at some point. So that's what I chose as a, as a topic. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to... No, I well, can go on and on. Let's find out how this course came to be because yeah. uh, I hadn't seen any kind of a course like this offered anywhere else. So give us, yeah, a, give us a little synopsis. Going back to uh, the Arts Place, CPFA Arts Place. Arts Place itself, <coughs> which is a town a function, town organization, uh, offers a variety of uh, art uh, types of courses for a variety of ages. But somebody, uh, a number of people along the line recently, 
Uh, jo Joanne Polarczyk, being the director, she and some of her cohorts were talking about trying to do something for the veterans, mm -hmm. some <coughs> small sense of payback. And they came up with the idea of offering a, a free course for veterans, not only within the Cheshire town, but uh, surrounding towns. Mm -hmm. And of course I was asked if I wanted to participate and without hesitation, yes, I was there, I was in on it. And uh, then the publicity went out and we got some beautiful people coming in, uh, Frank being one and another fellow you're going to meet and a few others. And it was a tremendously successful program, I believe. You can hear more from those who participated, <clears throat> but it's going to be offered again as a, as a free service, a free thank you uh, to the veterans coming up in the fall. So How many weeks it. does the course take? It's three uh, three weeks. Uh, am I right? Twice, <laughs> Seem like twice, three weeks. Yeah, twice. Twice, Week. two hours a day, two, four, six, eight hours. Excuse me. Okay. So it's two weeks, uh, uh, two days a week. We added one, all right. And we added an extra one, a little bonus. Sure. <coughs> yeah. And is it offered in the evenings? Actually, it was offered f uh, in the afternoon from three to five, maybe a little awkward time, but it was uh, plugged in at a time when we had most of the schedule set. So uh, frankly, at this point, I can't tell you when it's going to be. I haven't seen a new schedule for the fall. Okay. But uh, it's possible that uh, it may be offered at two different times to okay. accommodate. How, how do you start the class out? How do you introduce people to this method of drawing? Okay, well, um, pretty much I run this class on an eight-week basis, so I had to find a way to condense it somewhat. Mm -hmm. But all I do is just uh, tell the folks that uh, they're going to learn something that's relatively easy to master, to learn. You can get very good at pen and ink in a relatively short period of time when you compare it to some of the other media. Uh, and I just hand them a pen and they start doing some exercises, you may see some of them, mm -hmm. that just gets them used to putting the strokes down, putting the strokes down. And they eventually gravitate to dots if they want to or just lines we call hatch lines. <clears throat> and then I, Immediately that same day, they get right into uh, into starting their their uh, pictures. Cool. There's no artistic, I shouldn't say artistic. There's no drawing ability needed because we actually trace the the figure that they bring in the image on paper, and then they spend most of the time learning how to control and master the, the strokes. Okay. Now, when you say trace it on paper, you use a device, right? Yes, we use something called a light box. It's a bulb that sh shines through a translucent <coughs> piece of uh, plastic and we put their, their uh, face or their, their image there and a piece of good paper, mm -hmm. drawing paper, and they trace the outline and then they pr proceed to, to put the ink dots in. We do some little exercises here and there helping to control the pen. Ah, yes, that's very Something important. Something about pen, it doesn't yeah. erase. No, well. not at all. Yeah. So Frank, when you were introduced to this, the first class, what did you think? Well, I, I established the fact with a group that I, that I was not an artist and I'd never done any kind of art at all. And that, so that helped me get started. Um, I learned that fairly quickly that it was doable mm -hmm. after the first class or so. I thought, you know, I, I, I can do this. I can, uh, I got to work at it a bit, but uh, I can do it. And I, I was having a good time. I liked the group, uh, you know, and uh, it, everything was very simpatico. Uh, great staff and a good group of people. So uh, I'd say by the fourth time, I felt very comfortable mm -hmm. doing it, and uh, and I ended up with something that I that I like. Well, why don't you share it with us? Okay. Um, this is the photograph. Okay, hold it up toward that camera there. Yep. This is the photograph that I used, um, which is a, a picture of me sitting on a bunker in Vietnam. Um, something I should not have been doing because I presented a silhouette to the to the bridge line uh, the, and put myself, but at the time I wasn't thinking about that. So I used that as what went into the, uh, that was enlarged and that became the light box image. And this is the final product that I ended up with. Uh, and the thing about this, I could have gone on, I could have gone on with this and done done more, but I ended up being happy with it uh, the way it is. I didn't want to overdo it. Right. Um, and that's starting out as a person who describes himself as having no artistic ability no and ability No artistic to draw. ability, although I am a decent photographer. Uh -huh. I'll say that. But, but I come from an artistic family on my mother's side, so maybe that's... 
well, explains it. Sometimes <laughs> it's the eye-hand coordination that helps out a lot, and that can be genetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it was a good experience, and uh, and I'm happy with it. I'm going to get this framed. Excellent. Okay. And the word therapeutic came up, and um, did you find a therapy kind of value to it, Frank? Well, I mean, I think therapy is anything that you feel good about when mm -hmm. you're doing it, uh, and it's helpful in some way. So, I mean, I, I broke through my idea that I couldn't mm -hmm. do any kind of art. So, I mean, I'm through that, okay, and that's good. Yeah. Um, I, I thought, you know, it was therapeutic to be with a bunch of people that uh, were doing the same thing I was. I mean, they were, I, I think all of you were stretching yourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there was one person who, who, did, who already was an artist. Um, but um, yeah, if it's a good experience, and I'm, now I may go ahead and do other courses, uh, I may continue. Um, so that's, that's therapeutic. I mean, if it's kind of introduced me to a new aspect of my life, yep. then uh, that's good. Oh. So I think that's probably. Arts Place has that effect. Uh, there's, there's some, tell, tell us about some of the folks who are at Arts Place. Some of the other instructors. Yeah, some of the other um, teachers. Well, you know, there's, there's probably 20 or so full-time, so that meaning they all are at one given period uh, working on a project or, excuse me, teaching a class. We have some award-winning people, and I'm not sure I should, should mention You can mention names. Names, because yeah. uh, I'm going to leave some people out. But, hey. uh, you know, June Webster comes to mind and Rita Paradis and uh, Mali DeSoma. But these are professionals, high professional people who have achieved an awful lot in their uh, in their careers, and they are in fact uh, known, you know, nationally in some cases, mm -hmm. as you might guess. Um, and they all have an expertise, and they just perform so well because we have constantly we have a cadre of people coming back, semester after semester after yeah. semester. Well, on the other end of that spectrum, I I also teach at Arts Place. <laughs> I teach cartooning. Oh. I teach a kind of cartooning called numblets. It's based on the two syllables, uh, the first syllable of number, which is num, and the first syllable of letters, which is let. Could have called them letnums, but I thought num numlets sound a lot like better. Numblets. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not one of the award-winning, nationally known <laughs> folks. I'm kind of down here a little bit. But you might be, though. Well, you never know. You never know. After this, you will. <laughs> now, I want to make sure that we covered what you wanted to talk about, Frank, because uh, you're, you're only here for the first half of the show, and we want to make sure that you get to know, get to speak, rather, about what you wanted to say. No, I mean, that's what I wanted to say. Um, I wasn't sure. I was trying to figure out how much of it would be about being a veteran and how much of it would be about learning about art and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I'm still not quite sure about that in terms of what, what's expected from me. So would you, can you help me with that? Help well, me? let's see. There wasn't that much as far as we thought about it for a lot of experiences as a veteran. Right. Um, but some of it you brought out and um, some of your experiences at the ridge line and mm. not being a silhouette and that kind of thing. Right. Um, it must have been quite interesting over there. And I remember talking before we got on, on set that you were, one of your goals was to make sure that you got back, number one, but there was another goal that you wanted to make sure of. Yeah, well, I had a mission for, I mean, I should mention one other thing before I say what I'm going to say. Um, I have been co-teaching a Vietnam War course at Cheshire High School. Mm -hmm with Ralph Zingarella, who's now retired. I've uh, been doing that for about seven or eight years. <clears throat> and that's been tremendously, it's, it's been, been a lot of fun, and it's been very helpful to me, and has been right. therapeutic. We, we've got to sneak your goal in fairly quickly, because we're going to be well, My goal out. was not to, to fight back and defend myself, but not, not to consciously kill anyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, And I w was able to make it through the war without, you know, without shooting somebody. Uh, I thought of the North Vietnamese as uh, human beings, just like myself. And uh, okay, well, that's an admirable goal, and uh, thank you for your service. And we're glad you made it back uh, fairly unscathed. And uh, thanks for being with us. I'm glad you said fairly because yeah. there are a few dents <laughs> <know>. in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back.
we've made a little change. We have a new guest. I'd like to welcome Tom Dewig to our show. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. And before I forget, I want to thank you for your service. Well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. And tell us where, in fact, you were serving. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. All right. I served with the United States Marine Corps. I was a captain with a tank battalion in Vietnam. We also had 105s there, so we had a lot of power, a lot of uh, force behind us. Uh, every Marine is uh, uh, every Marine's a rifleman, and every Marine officer is uh, a platoon commander. So in Vietnam, you'd fill your function of what you were doing in supply or whatever, or then you would go out, and at nighttime you would either do patrols or you would do ambushes, counter guerrilla tactics uh, for that. And like I said, we had the 105, so we had a lot of power. A lot of power. Is it 105 a machine gun? You no, know, 105 is an artillery piece. Oh, all okay. right. <laughs> And they shoot, you know, eight to ten miles, uh, or whatever. And uh, you don't want to be no. near 105 when they're firing, or you don't want to be where they're landing. Right. Either one. And I'm assuming you didn't get a chance to do much art while you were in <laughs> Vietnam. Uh, no, uh, I didn't. The uh, Vietnam uh, was a place where. Uh, time could drag, and at other times the intensity was like unbelievable. All right, and if you had incoming fire in at you. Okay, you always knew the sounds of your fire going out and the fire that was coming in with you. Huh. The Russians supplied the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong with uh, these 122 millimeter rockets, and they used to come in, and you'd never forget the sound as they were coming in. Mm -hmm. All right, so you knew into the sandbags and into the rest. When our artillery was going out, you knew that sound, so you felt uh, you know a lot safer, and you knew it. Interesting comment on that. Uh, <clears throat> we would, if we received incoming fire, we would shoot an azimuth on a compass okay. and we'd shoot it to where the flash was. And then third tanks or whoever's on the other hill, they would shoot an azimuth and where the two intersected, that's where the fire was from. All right, so, <clears throat> you know, you say your schoolwork, your geometry, how is that there important? Is, sure. There was an example. Ah. All right, the, the other thing was that uh, that happened one time, we had puffed the Magic Dragon was up in the air. Now they had 50 caliber machine guns and they could put a spot every, every inch in a football field. Yep. And it looked like a waterfall coming out uh, from, the, uh, from the plane. And uh, every seventh round was a tracer, but it looked like a waterfall coming right. out. So it was uh, interesting mm. times. Yes, yeah. all right, now fast forward to Cheshire. Okay, Cheshire. 2014. Yeah, uh, Cheshire, uh, been a resident of Cheshire for approximately 32 years, mm -hmm. originally out of uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey. All right, my wife and I uh, came up with our children and we had, uh, love Cheshire. It's a great town, great people. And uh, it's, uh, you know, if you thank, if you're, one of the reasons I moved to Cheshire was the town we lived in New Jersey was very nice, West, Westfield, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And it uh, had a great band. All right, so when I came here, I went to the library and I checked out the library, how many people were in the band, how many went on to college and things like that. Cheshire was the spot. Yeah. So that's, that's how, you know, so how did art affect you subconsciously that you're not aware of? That's how it affected me. That's why we lived in Cheshire. And we've been here 32 years, love it, got grandchildren uh, who live here and uh, uh, we're as happy as can be. Yeah, well, and the Cheshire Music Program has been recognized nationally exactly. as one of the tops in the country. Right. And, and Mr. Kuhner, who's the chairperson of it now, has done a really good job with that and with the band. Right. But enough about those folks. Let's talk about what happened with you in art. Okay, in art. Yes, tell us about your origins uh, of art. Well, my origins of art, even though I went to college in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is an art capital, mm -hmm. and I enjoy going to museums and things like that, uh, with the encouragement of my wife and... Uh, I always was borderline or, you know, well, I couldn't do that, all right? Mm -hmm. And I remember from grammar school that, you know, we'd have art in class and things like that. And then uh, my grandchildren started drawing. Okay, so I would compete with them. I never made the refrigerator, <laughs> right? They made the refrigerator. Yeah, show us this one of your an, works. This is an example of my work. All right. Now this was before, right. and uh, before I the course. Before the course, yeah. and I didn't. Uh, I brought it today, so Tony would recognize how far he has taken me. And speaking of that, 
I personally <laughs> want to thank you that oh. you took me on this journey. And the people at the art place were fantastic. Um, uh, Joanne, everyone, they made you feel at home. Tony was an outstanding instructor. He took you step by step. He followed you through. He brought me from here. He got me to draw. Now, this is what he gave me. And this is what my drawings became over here. So all of a sudden, you see a big jump from oh, one yeah. to the other. All right. Then he brought uh, another uh, uh, art pieces to do. And we did them, uh, did them in there. And my wife and my grandkids couldn't uh, have said it. And my granddaughter, Juliana, and Anthony, they've been in the town art show, both at the high school and in the grammar school. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're very talented. Right. Now I know where they got it from. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it would, be, it would be my wife. But, uh, I mean, I am impressed and I am proud and I uh, enjoyed very much uh, what Tony did mm -hmm. for us and the other veterans who were, who were in there. Uh, Frank, who you just spoke to, and uh, the other t two that were in the class were a husband and wife uh, Air Force, and they, he was security on Guam that brought the B-52s over into Vietnam. Mm. So, I mean, everybody did their job, and right. he did, and we loved the B-52s. Of course. All right. Then uh, uh, he met his wife, who was a nurse in the Air Force, when he came back. So they were married, and there's a little romance story that goes mm -hmm. on, you know, Which tales of war yeah. with a little romance. Story. No, no, can't go yeah. into that. Gary and Denise. Lord. Gary and Denise. Lord. Lord. I right. know them right. well. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he did. I got a kick out of it. He, Frank did when he was in Vietnam. All right. Uh, uh, very touching, moving photograph. Yeah. All right. I mean, you could see the. The clouds, he took it at, when he talked about the ridge line, he took it at night uh, when the sun went down. But if you looked at it up close, it looked like an ocean behind him mm. with the cloud formation and right. everything. So it was, uh, it was very good. Frank did um, a Corvette. And the story on his Corvette was it belonged to, I think, his brother. And when he died, the car was passed around to all members of the family, and they have it for a month or two. So there, there was, you know, a connection with that. Right. And then the uh, 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 Denise, she drew a house, and it was her, was it her home or her daughters or something? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it was, and you'd look and so you'd was, see, you know, the progress. You'd say, oh, oh my God. Right now, let's bring Tony in for a minute. Yeah. What would you say about his progress? Uh, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't just see <laughs> it. A uh, tremendous amount. I, I don't think. We can take credit for all of that. I guess he was really a, a good student. Say it. Thank you. Here. But he did that extra work. That's a little bit over and above mm -hmm. what was required. But he did faithfully execute that. And you can, you're going to see the results in uh, his final piece. So uh, I'm, obviously uh, I didn't get a chance to say it, but I was delighted to be with these people and seeing how motivated they were and how hard they worked. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Oh, well, let's not keep the uh, viewing audience in suspense any longer. Let's hold up the photo that you right. had to work, work, work from. This, this was a photo of me when I was seven year, approximately seven years old. The, I had that cute little Irish face. My parents were Irish immigrants, and uh, they dressed me accordingly and sent me off to school. Mm -hmm. All right, I got in a fight with a guy called Mickey Dugan, and uh, my coat was ripped up and this, that, and everything. But... Uh, they took the picture anyway, combed my hair, and uh, uh, Frank taught me how to d comb the hair. I wasn't very good in the beginning, but he did it. And this is what the final product is. All right? Very impressive. And, and uh, like I say, my grandkids still don't believe I did it. And I said, my name's on it. They said, anybody could anybody put your could name on it. But, and it didn't even make the refrigerator. It graduated to the uh, shelf where the communion pictures are and the big, uh, well, I'm a top guy now in the family. They, I get a little respect now. Wow. All right. But it really comes down to uh, my wife. She was the one that encouraged me. I read it in the newspaper. Yeah. And uh, she encouraged me to go. And uh, she said, well, you know, why not? You, you might have some fun. Guess what? I had some fun, and I learned something. So it was very good. And uh, I would encourage any veteran who's out there, uh, Tony's not like a drill sergeant, close at times, but uh, he, uh, uh, 
He listens, he understands, and he'll take what, well, I think if you did the strokes a little further and made them a little longer, it would look better. Mm -hmm. uh, one I did, and he said, you know, he looked at it, yeah, okay, Tom, and then he <laughs> says, you need a, a little more on there. But it was a, a, a pleasure, an enjoyable experience. I'd recommend it for anyone. And I think the people at Art Place, uh, Joanne should be, uh, Thank, the whole staff there were uh, uh, unbelievable. You see how nice Tony is? Everybody is there mm -hmm. like that. And we had, uh, uh, we were kind enough that uh, frames were made available to us by Barbara's Gallery here in Cheshire. Yeah. And uh, she was as nice as everybody was. Guess what? It makes it that Cheshire's a nice town to live in. It is. And you know, they had difficulties like when we first came back from Vietnam that they, uh, uh, you know, they weren't treating the vets nice and everything. It's funny how the world changes. Yeah. All right. Mm. Now all that has come back, and you're proud to be a vet. You're proud to uh, 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 stand for America. You know what you did? You did your choices. Other people did their choices, and everybody lives with their their own choices. So I'm happy with my choices. I'm happy that I made the decision to go here with so my my pal Tony, and uh, it was great. Absolutely great. Good. Let's talk a little bit about the feelings that you experience while doing art. Do you get lost in it, or are you fully cognizant of what's going on? Yeah, what happens? I'm fully cos uh, cognizant, but the, uh, we we're talking about the dots. Yeah. All right. Now, in here, there's a lot of dots. All right. That's and right. the dots That's do the contrast between light and dark. All right, so the closer to the dots and the harder you do on the pen, but you never do the pen. You learn. You never do it, you know, that you got pressure on it. Right. All right, and then to catch, and now I look at people and I look at their eyes, I look at what they're wearing, I could draw that. And you look for the, the uh, uh, darkness in an eye mm -hmm. or where the shadow is in an eye, where the uh, uh, lines come in there. And they taught me the elongation, he taught me the parallel, he taught me cross hatching, he taught me scribbling, he taught me the, <laughs> taught me the dots and everything. So it, it, was, uh, uh, it was funny, I was going out and I was saying, uh, uh, geez, I could draw that. And my wife met somebody with a purse and I looked at the purse. I said, I could draw that. And so I said to the woman, I said, you know, I'm a, uh, an artist, I'm a sketcher. <laughs> yeah. My wife gave me one. And so said, You're not that good. <laughs> so you could safely say that uh, now you see the world a little differently and yes. you look through no at the world it. through an artist's glasses. Yeah, yeah. But, right. And, and I think good the right thing idea. is uh, the detail, where before you just looked at something and then you, you went over it. Mm -hmm. All right. And now the, with the detail, you look like. Uh, uh, I admire the way you're dressed, which I probably wouldn't notice before. I imagine the way my pal Tony's dressed over here. All right, and it, it's uh, you, you, you look you look aware. different. You look in detail where before, you know, you just went over. So you've done a good job. I've done it. You've done it. Sounds did that it. way, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you. All right, well, we're in. getting close to the very end of this edition, mm -hmm. so I'd like to thank our viewers for tuning in, and I'd like to thank all of our guests, all three of them. And uh, that's about it, so hopefully you'll see us at the next episode of 30 Minutes with Ron.